What's going on guys? It's me, Pegasus from the Wise Guys. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. I gotta waste your time for a little bit. Just pardon me, guys. I never mention my my sponsors like I need to, so I have to take a second to mention Custom Ink and Ink Gaming. Custom Ink is the base of our clothing. We will have a clothing line drop in September and a lot of pop-up shops around the Kansas City area. Stick with me. I do have a website. I know this probably a lot of y'all may not rock with my clothing. A lot of y'all do. A lot of y'all bought it and I really, really appreciate you. Shout out to you guys. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you checked out inkgaming.com and make sure you check out their stuff, man. It's awesome. And you can use our coupon code, the wise guys, TCG, TCG10 to get a discount. The wise guys, TCG10 to get a discount. Now we got to talk about these cards. Pardon me, I'm just a businessman, guys. You guys know how it is out here. I wanted to talk about Night Sword Serpent. Um, the card is <clears throat> absolutely uh, hilarious to me. Uh, it was uh, popping up in a lot of uh, duels that I was having uh, on the ladder on uh, like EDO Pro and like messing around with friends on EDO Pro and on the ladder on DB and random stuff. Um, I, I feel like just having random uh, extra extensions for the rank fours are just something to look at. I'm always mentioning text just because uh, I mess around a lot with, with, with text like that on certain profiles just to see if cards work or not, you know, because I feel like that's where the hidden gems are in Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's like what, where you can help a friend win a tournament, you know, like sometimes I don't have the same time to play uh, anymore, but I still have time to like help a friend prepare for a tournament. So I still try to look up stuff. Uh, Night Sword Serpent, I, I, I think it's okay. Um, it's just something to consider. I was going to mention the Pixies thing uh, with Digusto Phoenix. It's randomly, guys, something you need to have in your extra deck if you're playing uh, Sprite. But uh, unfortunately, Triff hella beat me to the punch. He saw it, was doing it on stream and taking people's head off, guys. It can hit people for like 10,000 damage uh, out of thin air. If you're not playing that in Sprite, I feel like you're, you're tripping a little bit. I feel like it's worth it. The cat shark thing, um, leading it to, to protect yourself and then have something set up the next turn to basically do 7,000 damage almost guaranteed if they can't fight through your Sprite board, that's extraordinarily powerful, but I definitely feel like you have to play the Dagusto Phoenix stuff. Deep Sea Minstrel is something I also feel like you need to play in Sprite. If you're playing like Deep Sea Diva and Swap Frog and all of the other uh, water stuff to have a talent or a, an appointed light card to be able to look in your opponent's hand and take cards out of their hand to the end phase to basically play around certain hand traps that you may be scared of or to see a dark ruler coming and prepare for it or you know like if you if you're playing deep sea minstrel as well as a uh, cross out uh, and then you're playing all these nimble the nimble stuff the nimble package and all of the other water stuff that you could inside of sprite you may be able to see where i'm coming from where i'm saying if you just pitch a water like that's absolutely insane and also a lot of people are slipping adventure into that as well into some of these builds uh enchantress is a water so uh, and it can banish from the graveyard like, that's free and you look at their hand I, I feel like that that and the Dagusto Phoenix thing, guys, I would genuinely consider doing that. Looking at people's hands and being able to take their head off uh, figure of speech, guys. You know, I forget we're a family page. Figure of speech, guys. That's extremely powerful and something I feel like you need to have in your deck. Cheap shotting people in Yu-Gi-Oh!, Yu-Gi-Oh being unfair, the history of Yu-Gi-Oh is the most unfair deck is probably going to win. It's unfair to look at people's hand like that. It's unfair to do 10,000 damage out of thin air. I'm just saying, guys. If you like it, you like it. If it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's just my opinion. Next card I want to talk about is Crossout Designator. Um, guys, I feel like this card is very similar to a card like Reaper. Um, and to take out a card like Ash Blossom, to take out a card like Nibiru, some certain decks can't just deal with uh, those two cards. Uh, I play a deck like Exo Sister, and um, you can play Cross Out in a deck like that. Um, cross Out in a deck like Tear Lament, Cross Out in a deck like, like Sprite. If you're scared of a specific card, or if you're really tired of getting Dark Ruler, I would consider Cross Out. Um, just because I feel like when when card, when everybody starts playing the same cards and you hard lose to those cards, it's probably something you should consider to play the card because this card could be that slight edge in a certain interaction that could help you actually win the game. And inside of a deck like Fluandery is a deck that I play very frequently and there's a deck profile coming soon. I don't know if people even, uh, it, trust me, it, it's coming, it's coming. So some people have been asking me for it. So we're, we're gonna get there. 
it can be a combo piece. So I mean like, and you can even cross out, cross out. So like if somebody's on to cross out being a good card, you can cross out their cross out and then the game can get even crazier. And you, you guys have already been playing games where you're playing against tier limit and it's like chain link one, chain link two, three, four, five, six, eight, and then you get to like chain link seven. That's how smooth uh, a lot of these games are. That's how smooth cross out is. Next card I want to talk about is, uh, is Zoroa and uh, the Majestus stuff and the Majestus deck. I feel like I wanted to talk about it as a tech inside of Exo Sister, and then Martha came out and it was like, yeah, this card is not relevant anymore. Uh, that, that version was actually pretty powerful and I had figured it out and I had been playing Zoroa Control as a deck by itself because Majestus is actually a deck that people can like sweep an event with quietly. It's a very uh, powerful control type synchro where you can literally just study, it. like if everybody in the room is playing Tier Lament and you can barrier them, like that's kind of nuts for a rogue deck to be able to do that. So decks like that, they can just force multiply in a room and just like, oh, everybody's playing a uh, Zodiac. You know, like if it was a zoo format and everybody was playing zoo, Majestus would be a deck that could literally come out of thin air. So I genuinely feel like people should probably pay attention to it. Now inside of Exo Sister, it just got bumped because Martha is like terror top on cocaine. The card is absolutely insane. Like I've never seen a card make a deck turn a corner like this card, uh, probably since a terror top like card, but that all came out at the same time. Like this card is very similar to uh, like double helix, how much it did for Exo Sister. It's very, very powerful. Um, so it just kind of bumped the, the Zoroa stuff, but I wanted to mention Majestus itself. Ready Fusion and uh, Alvane, I wanted to mention these cards just because inside of Sprite, having as many random extenders like that, Ready Fusion is a card I've been seeing pop up uh, in, in little small testing circles that we've just been uh, messing around with different cards. And this was just the one that it wasn't that bad of a card. And then having a card that could also be a floating tuner is also something that can be randomly powerful. I, I feel like that's pretty good. Sometimes randomly making a Cthulhu, making a, a Herald of the Arclight, I've been seeing boards like that. There's other synchros you can make. There's other setups you can have. You can turn that into a Halka Fibrex. It, I could go on and on. You guys get where I'm coming from. Um, that's all for those cards up there. Last couple cards. I know I've kind of been talking for a second, but Avermax and Boralode. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people uh, playing Sprite uh, turn IPs that they're going into on their opponent's turn into the uh, specific uh, follow-up card, which is the Avermax usually. And usually with the Avermax, you have a, a, a huge control over the game where the game is pretty much over from that point. But in that consideration, if the game is, is thinking that the game is over like that, then a very powerful card like Borlo Dragon can snatch the, the Avermax away from them. And having that answer is the like the counter to the counter. And Avermax is an extraordinarily powerful card anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Dark Cavalry is a card I wanted to talk about as well. Um, it's possible to play inside of Tillament because uh, Rhino Heart's a warrior. And then you're playing King of the Swamp. So if you're playing a build where you're playing three uh, King of the Swamps, and you pitch one and you have an additional one in your hand, you could use it as the material and then you can make a dark cavalry. I've, I've been trying it. Um, that's uh, a, a lot of investment uh, and a lot of like hoping that things go right in a setup. And you know, sometimes that doesn't work in Yu-Gi-Oh! But it's a 2800 card that gains attack for each spell or trap card on the field and in the grave. And it has piercing and it has a quick effect to protect you from targeting. And it's a spell caster. And if you're running over people, I mean, it's it's something strong. Now, Ultimate Slayer may have just completely bumped it completely out of the game where, where it, it might not be good enough to do that. But like having something that can't be Valor, it can't be Empire, like you can't target it and it's going to discard stuff. And if you're playing Danger stuff, then the stuff you're discarding is going to get triggered anyway. You know, like Dark Cavalry might be something pretty strong. And then like slipping like Secret Village, I've, I've been doing that. Um, <sighs> Restrict is so good, Millenniumize Restrict is so good that like that that card just might not be worth it. Like Millenniumize Restrict is a powerful card. It's called by the grave repeatedly, and there's even there's even builds beyond that. But it's it's just really really strong. Secret Village is something also I would consider too. Uh, Mystic Mine is that unfair? I also feel like Secret Village can be that unfair because you can't get Dark Ruler if you don't have a Spellcaster. See what I mean? Uh, the next card I want to talk about is Crumble Logos. Uh, Crumble Logos, very, very powerful card as well. I feel like it's um, probably too slow for this format, but being able to possibly turn off a card or trigger a, a effect 
in a way that you can extend past something on like playing through a board crumble logos may be a potential tech that you may want to consider mannequin cat would be another one that i would mention um but just I, I just have to say, you have to explore all the level twos, guys. There's so much stuff to talk about, like cap shells with Dark Beckoning Beast and a lot of that stuff. Like having a Star Seraph-like package inside of Sprite is something you can have. It can help you play around a, a mirror where somebody's playing like, uh, not a mirror, pardon me, like Tear Lament where they're playing Window or you're playing against uh, Shadal or something like that. It's just, there's so many techs in this format, guys. Happy dueling. I hope I can help in some kind of way. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Check out the websites and I'll see you next time. Pegasus out. Arrivederci. Ciao, Bella.